All right, what the heck is immune resilience? Explain, explain immune putting those resilience. two words together. <laughs> what, what are you trying, what are you trying to get across here? What are we trying to say? Well, really it ultimately comes down to trying to help our immune system be the best that it can be. And yes, we wanna say it's a strong immune system, but I try to be a little bit more nuanced about the term because um, you know, sometimes we want our immune system to behave properly. We want it to um, you know, fight back against germs that try to make us sick, against COVID, um, but we don't want it to fight too hard inappropriately because then we get things like allergies and autoimmunity and things like that. So um, you know, we want our immune system to be, system to be um, to be strong, but also measured and balanced. And I think that that really comes down to this term resilience for me, um, you know, and it just, it's a very comprehensive term. And I think when we approach our immune system, we have to really think about it in this very comprehensive way. You know, it's often the case that we might think, um, okay, well, I'll just take some more vitamin C when it comes right. to winter time, but really, and I think what what your message is, is trying to get across with all the discussions that you have and what I want to try and communicate is that our immune system is this really sophisticated um, network of defenses. It has a tremendous job to do. It's got to be able to ramp up and down. It's got to be able to orchestrate this sort of like gigantic panoply of all these different um, cells and coming together. Yeah. Um, you know, it's got to have its immune memory um, and it's got to use inflammation but use it wisely. Inflammation is a big tool of the immune system to fight against germs. And then it has to kind of quiet down. So we need it to do the ramp up and all we need it to things. do the quieting down. So all so of we're gonna, let's, let's link all that up together in, a, in just a second, because I think that word people don't put together e either. They don't think immune system and then think inflammation. They think they're two separate paths, right? But ultimately the immune system is so complicated that it does trigger low-grade inflammation, but ultimately triggers severe inflammation when it's not getting what it needs. And that's the sort of widespread incidence of autoimmune disease and cancers and all these other things that we see, you know, for so many times. So, you know, one of the biggest misconceptions I think about the immune system, you nailed it, is I'll take a little vitamin C or vitamin D or zinc and boom, I'm done. What is the immune system? How would you answer that? Right. So I think about it in, um, in three big buckets. And this is sort of what I talk about in the book, at least to, the, to kind of introduce the, the, the concept that we have this multi-layered system. I mean, like if you think about how you protect something like your house, for instance, you know, you don't just have a single door lock. You have, you know, you've got a fence, Lots maybe. Of stuff, right. You've got like maybe a security light. You maybe have a security alarm. You've got your door keys. You've got, you know, you have this whole different multi-layered system and your immune system works a bit like that too. So you have, even before you get to an immune cell, you've got barriers, like your barriers in your lungs or your barriers in your digestive tract. And those are incredibly important first line of defense. You've got even sort of down to the acidity of your saliva, your stomach acid, right? Um, you know, you've got these cells that are lining all of these barriers, producing even things called anti anti um, microbial peptides, AMPs, and sort of those are like a little, you know, uh, antibacterial cream, if you were that, that your body just makes and applies to all of these surfaces that um, produces pathogens, like it reduces the germs that are trying to make you sick. Um, incidentally, those are very um, much controlled and even directed by vitamin D. So like there's immediately one link that links vitamin how... D, vitamin D guys, you're going to hear vitamin D over and over again. It's just one that you can't go wrong with. Right. I think it probably right. hits all your buckets. So but anyhow, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, absolutely. Vitamin D has so many different roles beyond just bone health, which we normally know it for. Um, so we have all our barriers and like, we know that gut health is important. I'm sure you talk about gut health a lot. All the time. And, <laughs> right. And so that's like, you know, a huge uh, part of the immune system, 70 to 80% of your immune cells are patrolling your GI tract at any one time. So um, that's a big bucket. And then you've got all of the immune cells. You've got like cells called natural killer cells and neutrophils yep. and eosinophils, mast cells. Um, that's sort of like your innate immune system that works against all different kinds of germs without being specific to one. 
Um, and then you have your adaptive immune system, which is like your T cells and your B cells, and they get really specific to any particular type of germ once they've seen it. And your B cells produce antibodies, which is you know, what, something that we would recognize for the um, immune system. Um, and then there's a third bucket, which you know I think is maybe surprising to lump into this because it's not part of us necessarily, but I'm talking here about our microbiome, yeah. um, like all of the helpful bacteria that reside in our GI tract, even in our lungs, all over the place in our body really. And they are like our allies in our immune defense.